Oh, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. I want to touch you so badly, but I know I can't. We are going to respect your wishes. Hi, my name is Shelly, and I recently convinced my husband Robin that we should become first-time foster parents to a one-eyed Shih Tzu named Sadie. If you'd like to come along on our rescue ride and find out how this journey goes, please keep watching because we have quite the story to tell. I need to confess a little something before moving forward. Just joking, not that kind of confession. I didn't start out wanting to foster a rescue dog. I wanted to straight up adopt a dog in need of a home. I wanted a dog that was good to go because I thought that would be easier for us given our particular family situation. I'm the mom of an amazing 17-year-old son named Anderson. I'm also the daughter of a very sweet woman named Stella. Last year was a sad year for our family because my mom was diagnosed with Lewy body dementia and Parkinsonism. We were still grieving the death of my dad, her husband of 52 years, when this devastating diagnosis came about. She moved in with us 10 days later so I could assume the role of her caregiver. Last year ended on a sad note, so I knew I had to find something to bring some joy back into our home again. And I felt strongly that something was a dog. I started my search by referring to animal shelters and dog rescue organizations online. With roughly 10,000 of them spanning the continent, I found a lot of adoptable dogs. There were big dogs, small dogs, old dogs, young pups, and everything in between. Every dog had a story, a history, and a dream of a forever home. Some of the dogs looked optimistic, almost as if they had faith that one day they would get adopted, while others looked practically hopeless. It made me sad to see so many good dogs waiting for the opportunity at a second chance in life. I wondered what kind of secrets their hearts held, secrets that they would never be able to tell. I hoped that the misfortunes they'd suffered in life wouldn't haunt them for the rest of their days. I wanted each of them to get adopted and find the loving home that they so deserved. I realized I had to narrow my search because adopting a dog from another province or from out of the country wasn't practical. I needed to meet the dog first. I was specifically looking to adopt a small dog because I wanted my mom to be able to enjoy the comfort of having a four-legged friend curl up on her lap. Illness, especially dementia, can be socially isolating, and my mom was lonely despite living with us. I was also searching for a dog that was more in keeping with being hypoallergenic, <coughs> since Anderson had experienced allergies to some of our friend's dogs, who were heavy shedders. <laughs> in January, I thought I'd found the right dog who fit our criteria and was local to us. So I filled out an adoption application, only to find out several weeks later that the foster mom had fallen so much in love with the dog that she ended up keeping her. It didn't feel right to be sad over this. So I kept my search going, and then in early April, I found Sadie. One look at the picture that was posted of her was enough. My heart was so hooked that the title that accompanied her picture that read, Urgent Foster Needed, didn't discourage me. If anything, it motivated me more. Sadie was described as a shy, five-and-a-half-year-old, ten-pound Shih Tzu not fond of men or children or other dogs. The not fond of men part did concern me ever so slightly. She'd been bred several times in the home where she previously lived. She was many weeks away from becoming adoptable. She required a hernia repair surgery on top of needing to be spayed. She lost her right eye last November when she was viciously attacked by another dog. It was this event that prompted someone to step in and remove her from the home. There was no question that Sadie was a dog with some special needs. She was also a dog in another province, two hours away from us, assigned to an animal hospital for care that was not transferable to a veterinarian near us. She wasn't the ready-to-go, adopt-tomorrow kind of dog I was initially hoping to find. But that didn't matter anymore. 
I wanted to bring her home. I wanted to foster her. I wanted to nurture her through her upcoming surgeries. I wanted to help her heal from the trauma she'd suffered. I felt with every fiber of my being that she belonged with us. I filled out the application to foster her, and before I knew it, Robin and I were on our way to get her. So today's the day we become foster parents. How do you feel about that? I'm a little nervous, but excited. What are you nervous about? Well, I haven't had a dog since I was a kid, so I just hope all the natural instincts come back. Oh, I'm sure they will, as long as you haven't forgotten your pooper scooper instincts. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Do you think she's going to like us? I think she's going to love us. Aww. Especially you. Aww. (laughs) Is it silly to say that I already love her and I haven't even met her yet? Coming from you, that does not surprise me at all. (laughs) going to make me cry. My heart is already so invested and I know that that's not how you're supposed to go into the whole dog fostering situation but I'm feeling the love. For the last several days Sadie had been in the loving care of a very special lady in Montreal who volunteers with the rescue organization that took ownership of her. We met this angel woman on Easter Sunday in a Walmart parking lot in Rockland, Ontario the halfway point between our home and hers. There's the Walmart sign. Turn right onto Carmen Bergeron Street. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you? I think so, and I hope so. (sighs) So excited. I hope she likes us. In 200 meters, turn left. I hate what this little dog has been through. I want to make it better for her. I know you do, and you will. she's here. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. It was emotional meeting Sadie and the rescue volunteer. Meaningful, memorable, beautiful, but definitely emotional. Minutes earlier, I'd confessed to Robin in the car that I already loved Sadie, and somehow seeing her in the flesh made me love her even more. I didn't expect her to come bounding out of the car and jump into my arms given her backstory. I had no expectations of her being happy to see me. The rescue volunteer reassured Sadie by petting her for a bit before she picked her up and placed her on the ground in front of me. She advised me not to try and touch her yet because reaching for her could result in her biting out of fear. She was too scared and too unsettled. It broke my heart to see her trembling in fear. She'd only been with the rescue volunteer for a few days. Her entire world had drastically changed and it was about to change again. She told me to let Sadie come to me, and she assured me that Sadie would let me know when it was okay to touch her. She said it had taken Sadie a few days to warm up to her and feel comfortable enough to be touched, so I promised that I would take a slow and cautious approach with her. My goal was to help put her at ease, not add to her already stressed state of mind and emotion. The rescue volunteer told me that she's been fostering dogs for 10 years. She shared with me that she tries not to get attached to the dogs that stay with her short term, but it happened with Sadie, and even though she knew she couldn't keep her, she admitted that she was finding it hard to say goodbye. The volunteer wasn't in a position to foster Sadie long term because she lived in a condo in Montreal, and Sadie became very vocal whenever she was left alone. Both she and her husband worked outside the home, and Sadie's separation anxiety was problematic. She gathered Sadie's things from the backseat of her car and told me which play items were her favorite. She warned me that when Sadie came to her place a few days prior, she didn't eat for the first 24 hours, and to expect this to be the case. She told me that Sadie wasn't used to eating dog food because she'd been fed human food by her previous owners. There was a jar of boiled chicken in her bag, along with some kibble that she apparently wasn't overly fond of. We discussed the importance of getting her on a good diet that was consistent and that would meet all of her nutritional needs moving forward. Robin and I hadn't had time to get a pet carrier or a travel harness, so she advised that we let Sadie have the option of either lying down in her dog basket or on her blanket in the back seat of our car.
We said our goodbyes and wished one another well. She waved goodbye to Sadie. My heart went out to her because I could clearly see that it was hard for her to say goodbye. This is what dog rescue volunteers do. They say goodbye so they can say hello to the next dog in need that shows up at their doorstep. They are selfless, generous, kind-hearted souls who I have incredible respect and admiration for. And before the blustery April winds blew us away, Robin and I got into the car with a little dog that was about to change our lives. How you doing, little girl? Hmm? You okay back there? It's okay. I know you're scared. I wish you weren't. It's a bit of a bumpy ride. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's breaking my heart that she's... She's so unsure. Hi, honey. Just checking in on you. she's thinking about getting in the basket. Oh, she's resting her head on the side of her dog bed. It's so cute. She's doing a strange licking thing. Maybe she's thirsty really doing something strange. She keeps licking and trying to yawn over and over again. Oh, she's getting comfortable. Good girl. You're on your blanket. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. I want to touch you so badly, but I know I can't. We are going to respect your wishes, little Miss Sadie. Hi, sweet girl. We're almost home. Almost there. I can't wait for you to meet my son and my mom. They're gonna love you. Okay, last corner. Thanks for watching part one of our fostering journey. In part two, you'll get to see what happens when Sadie gets out of the car and puts her paws on her property for the very first time. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and feel free to comment below. We'd love to hear from you. You can also subscribe to our channel. Be sure to hit the bell button so you'll be alerted each time we post a new video. Be well and we'll see you next time.